Welcome to Brainish English Stories. Sir Walter Elliot lived in Kellynch Hall, Somersetshire. He liked to read a book called The Baronetage. It was his favorite. He found joy in it when he had free time and comfort when he felt sad. When he read about the old titles and families, he felt admiration. Even if he was upset about family matters, reading the baronetage made him feel better. He especially liked reading about his own family history. The book always opened to the page about his own family. It said, Elliot of Kellynch Hall. Walter Elliot was born on March 1, 1760. He married Elizabeth on July 15, 1784. She was the daughter of James Stevenson, ESQ of South Park, in Gloucester. They had four children, Elizabeth, born on June 1, 1785, and born on August 9, 1787, a stillborn son, born on November 5, 1789, and Mary, born on November 20, 1791. That's how the paragraph looked originally, but Sir Walter added more information. He wrote about his daughter Mary getting married on December 16, 1810, to Charles Musgrove, the son of Charles Musgrove, ESQ of Uppercross in Somerset. He also wrote down the date when his wife died. The book then talked about the Elliot family history. It said how they started in Cheshire and did important things like being a high sheriff and representing a borough in Parliament. It also mentioned their loyalty and dignity. Sir Walter wrote some more about Kellynch Hall, where they lived. He mentioned that William Walter Elliot was the next in line to inherit everything. Sir Walter was very vain. He thought he was very handsome even though he was 54 years old. He cared a lot about how he looked and his position in society. He believed that being handsome was almost as good as being a baronet. So, Sir Walter loved himself a lot. His good looks and his rank were the only good things about him. He didn't deserve a wife as good as Lady Elliot. She was excellent, sensible, and kind. Even though she made a mistake by marrying him when she was young, she never made any other mistakes afterwards. She tolerated his flaws, helped him become respectable, and took care of their family for 17 years. Even though she wasn't very happy herself, she found joy in her duties, friends, and children. She had three daughters, the oldest being 16 and the youngest 14. It was a big responsibility for her to leave her daughters to the care of their proud and silly father when she died. But she had a very good friend, Lady Russell, who lived nearby in Kellynch Village. Lady Elliot relied on her friend's advice and kindness to help raise her daughters with good principles and teachings. Lady Elliot and Sir Walter didn't get married even though some people might have thought they would. Lady Elliot had died 13 years ago, but Lady Russell and Sir Walter were still close friends and neighbors. Lady Russell didn't want to get married again, and people understood that. But Sir Walter's decision not to marry again was a bit surprising. He was doing it for his daughters. He was very fond of his eldest daughter, Elizabeth. She was very beautiful and influential, just like him. They got along very well. But his other two daughters were not as important to him. Mary got a bit of importance by marrying Mr. Charles Musgrove, but Anne, despite being kind and elegant, was not valued much by her father or sister. To Lady Russell, however, and was like a dear daughter. Lady Russell loved all of them, but she felt a special connection with Anne, who reminded her of Lady Elliot. A few years ago, an Elliot was very pretty,
but she doesn't look the same now. Her beauty faded early. Her father didn't admire her much, especially because she looked different from him. He didn't have much hope for her, even when she was younger. He only thought about Elizabeth marrying well. Mary married into a respectable family with a lot of money, but Elizabeth was the one he thought would make a good match. Sometimes, women look even prettier at 29 than they did 10 years earlier. This was true for Elizabeth. She was still as beautiful as she was 13 years ago. Sir Walter forgot how old she was and thought she and Elizabeth were still very attractive, even though everyone else was getting older, and looked tired. Mary looked rough, and Lady Russell had wrinkles on her forehead that bothered him. Elizabeth wasn't as happy as her father. She had been in charge of Kellynch Hall for 13 years. She made decisions and rules at home, and she led the way in social events. She remembered all of this and knew she was 29. She still felt as pretty as before, but she worried about getting older. She hoped a baronet would propose to her soon. Then she could enjoy reading her favorite book again, without feeling upset. She had been disappointed before, especially by William Walter Elliot, who was supposed to marry her according to her father's wishes. When Anne was young, she thought she would marry William Walter Elliot, who would become a baronet if she didn't have a brother. Her father also wanted them to marry. They didn't know him when he was a boy. But after Anne's mother died, her father tried to become friends with him. Even though William wasn't very warm at first, her father kept trying to befriend him, understanding that young people can be shy. During a trip to London, when Anne was young and beautiful, William was introduced to her. At that time, William was studying law and liked him a lot. He was invited to their home, but he never came. The next spring, he was seen in town again, and everyone thought he would come visit them, but he didn't. Later, they found out he had gotten married to a rich woman who wasn't from a noble family. Anne's father was upset about this. He felt like William should have asked him before getting married especially since he had publicly shown support for William. He mentioned they were seen together in a couple of places. Anne's father expressed his disapproval, but William didn't seem to care. He didn't try to apologize and didn't want to be part of their family anymore. So, they stopped being friends with him. Elizabeth was still angry at Mr. Elliot, even after several years. She had liked him because he was her father's heir, and she thought he would be a good match for her. She couldn't think of anyone else who would be as suitable for her as he was. But he had behaved very badly, and even though Elizabeth was wearing black ribbons for his wife, she couldn't forgive him. His first marriage might have been forgivable, but he had done something even worse. He had spoken disrespectfully about her family and their heritage, which was unacceptable. This is how Elizabeth felt. She had to deal with these feelings while living a quiet and elegant life in the countryside. There wasn't much excitement, and she didn't have many useful skills to occupy her time. But now, Elizabeth had another worry on her mind. Her father was having money problems. She knew that when he looked at the baronetage now, it was to distract himself from the bills from his tradespeople and the unwanted advice from Mr. Shepherd, his agent. The Kellynch property was good, but not as good as her father thought it needed to be. When her mother was alive, they managed their money carefully, but since her mother died, her father had been spending more than he should. He couldn't spend less because he felt like he had to keep up appearances, but even though he wasn't doing anything wrong, he was getting deeper into debt. 
He couldn't hide it from Elizabeth anymore. He had hinted at it last spring in town, asking if there was anything they could cut back on. But Elizabeth couldn't think of anything more they could do beyond cutting back on charity and not buying new furniture for the drawing room. But even these measures weren't enough to solve their money problems. Sir Walter had to tell Elizabeth the full extent of their financial troubles. Elizabeth didn't have any better ideas. She felt like she was being treated unfairly, and she didn't know what to do to reduce their expenses without giving up their dignity or comfort. Sir Walter couldn't sell much of his land, and even if he could, it wouldn't solve their problems. He had agreed to mortgage some of it, but he refused to sell any of it. He didn't want to bring shame to his family name. He wanted to pass on the Kellynch estate to his children just as he had received it. They asked their two close friends, Mr. Shepherd and Lady Russell, for advice. They hoped that one of them would come up with a solution to their money problems without them having to give up anything they enjoyed.